Uh, but my name is Akshay Sura. Um, I have been in MVP for a little bit. That's my information up there. I'm a partner at Chronobus Consulting. Uh, lately, I've been working on commerce, uh, trying to dig into it and do some good for the community and share the knowledge which I get from it. And my name is Cameron Jaman. I'm also a partner with Akshay at Chronobus Consulting. I've been a Sitecore MVP since 2013. Uh, mainly work as a Sitecore architect and uh, together we, we help customers, clients, and other agencies uh, implement and get up to speed with Cycle. Uh, so as you know, there's about 3,000, <coughs> if not a little bit more people who are at the symposium at this moment in time, which is great. It's a lot more than last year, uh, but there's a ton of other people who couldn't make it for whatever reason, and they are, trust me, <laughs> watching the Twitter feed with bated breath. Uh, so if you post on Twitter or LinkedIn, please be sure to tag. Not everyone can see it. <laughs> please be sure to tag uh, Sitecore Sim on Twitter and then at Sitecore on LinkedIn uh, if you post anything. Also, uh, you can tag us if you like. It's uh, Canvas Inc. So before we get into the guts of our uh, loyalty plugin, I just wanted to go over a little bit about Cycle Commerce 9 uh, because it is a bit different to previous iterations of Commerce. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you have used Commerce before and how many of you have been playing with Cycle Commerce 9. Uh, with Commerce 9, you get uh, over 40 SXA components straight out of the box. Uh, you get things like uh, product listings, product details, uh, the mini parts, the checkout process. Uh, these come all out of the box and it's SXA so you can just drag and drop and build your website pretty pretty rapidly. Uh, SXA components themselves are pretty easy to extend. Uh, it's like any other SXA component that they're easy to inherit and add your own functionality to. Suncore Commerce 9 has also been completely rewritten from the ground up. It now uses uh, Microsoft.NET Core which is their latest and greatest uh, framework, development framework, and they've been able to rebuild commerce uh, using a microservice architecture, which brings a lot of extensibility and scalability benefits with it. Uh, there's a whole heap of uh, integrated dashboards that come out of the uh, box of commerce as well. Uh, you've got dashboards for inventory management, catalog management, uh, promotions, pricing, uh, and obviously things like orders and customer management, the kind of things you would expect. Uh, there's a number of inventory management features as well. Uh, you can uh, manage uh, multi-store, multi-warehouse, uh, you can do multi-site inventories, you can do multiple currencies. Uh, so all, all of these modern features that you would expect in an in a up-to-date uh, commerce offering. You can also integrate uh, user-generated content. So if you have uh, reviews, product reviews, feedback, uh, systems and that kind of thing. If you use the stack flow integration, user generated content integration, then that's uh, a neat way of integrating with uh, commerce and your website. And the deployment model is very, very flexible. You can deploy to Azure, IaaS, Azure PaaS. You can deploy on-premise and the licensing model is very flexible and perpetual for the newer consumption-based licensing as well. Um, so what we try to do is we try to find the best definition for um, what, what a customer loyalty program is. So first of all, you want a customer loyalty program to have a long-term relationship with your customer. This is not something short-term like a discount you give out and it's done, it's long-term. You want to be able to have the customer come back to you from time to time, time, to time again and you want to do the same, you want to be able to keep uh, that relationship with your customer. So it's a long-term structured marketing effort is what I like about this quote. The other one which is interesting is you want repeat customers who are loyal. How do they show us that they're loyal, which is they buy from us from time to time. And these are the loyal customers you want because they will refer you new customers. And getting new customers is a lot more expensive than keeping existing customers. So this quote really resonated with me and I wanted it. Um, as part of this slide. So, so as actually mentioned, uh, 
There are lots of benefits to having a loyalty program. Um, it's an easier way to, easier way, it's one of the ways to reduce uh, customer churn um, and to increase the retention rate by rewarding your customers directly for shopping with yourselves. Uh, it's also another way of attracting new customers, making yourself stand up from other brands and other retailers. Uh, if you have a structured and a good loyalty program with uh, good benefits, it's a, it's a really real, it's a real plus point. I'm sure we've uh, shopped with different retailers just based on loyalty programs before. You can also use it as a way of rewarding your customers for shopping directly with yourselves. So instead of uh, your customers going for a third party, uh, it's uh, by them coming to you, you can increase your profit margins. And you also get a direct one-to-one -one conversation with your customers. Instead of them going through a third party, you can have that direct end-to-end uh, -end communication with them. You can use them for incentivizing users for placing future orders, multiple orders. I know things like Amazon use them for uh, use pricing structures, for example, to uh, reward you for having cheaper pricing structures for having multiple advance orders on <coughs> consumables such as uh, razors. I know, I know they've, uh, I've seen that a few times. Another uh, benefit, another way you can use your reward program is to use it instead of discounting. Um, so you give your customers reward points instead of giving them dis immediate and uh, immediate discounts. The problem with immediate discounts is they are immediate. Customers can use them and they have less incentive to come back and shop for, with you in the future. A structured reward program means that the customer has a longer term structure to come back and uh, earn those points and then eventually redeem those points. Um, so, full disclosure. <laughs> so most of this code is already on GitHub, so your teams can access it right now. It's not the most up to date, but it's a few weeks old, and we're going to update it right after this uh, presentation. The other one we wanted to mention is all the demos are recorded on Setco Nine Update Two, on Commerce Nine Update Two. They're real, but unfortunately, because of the way the demo guards work in conferences, we didn't want network issues as long as or anything of that sort, so we recorded it um, before coming here. So the first uh, journey we wanted to take you through is um, Jane Moynot, and that is the real last name, and I know someone with it, uh, <laughs> wants to purchase for the first time on our site. Uh, again, what we tried to do is we tried to use uh, as many out-of-the-box components as we can without a lot of customization to kind of show you guys uh, how you can build something pretty basic, pretty fast. Uh, you can always come back, make your emails pretty, make your emails have links and things like that, but just bear in mind that we're trying to show you what you can do just right out of the box. So you want to go to the next one? So, uh, so this first demo, again, like I said, a new user, this is a fictitious site called Sitecore Eats. Uh, it's meant for an online catering business which sells <coughs> Uh, packs of uh, for 10 or 15 people um, for your office parties or anything like that. So they have burgers, uh, salads, some beverages, some side core cans if you want some of those, and some sites. Uh, so before she goes ahead and does anything, because she's a very smart lady, uh, she's going to go ahead and try to register on the site. Um, and again, out of the box, this comes with. Uh, with Sitecore Commerce, so let's go ahead and uh, add our information, uh, create the account, uh, go ahead and add the address. And again, you can customize your sign up form in a way you can ask a lot of information or a little, it's totally up to you. This is out of the box. Now we have the address, she's going to go ahead and add some yummy pumpkin veggie burgers because they're yummy. Uh, <laughs> and then, they're yummy, trust me. Uh, and then as you can see, there's a quick card again. We did not customize this component at all out of the box. Add some salad to the cart as well. And then um, add some sidecore cans, maybe five. Be nice. You have to bear with me because I, I don't know what's happening. I'm trying to guess. Uh, so that's the quick card. Let's go ahead and uh, check out. Um, again, the checkout process is what comes out of the box. We have not modified it except to show the estimated points. Points are calculated based on one items and rounded down to the nearest integer. 
Once you enter the billing address, uh, get to the next, we're using the Braintree Sandbox account so that they sample our credit card so we validate the payment, specify the billing address for it, and then continue the process. <laughs> so, uh, check if all of your information is right. If it is, go ahead and confirm it. As you can see, it tells you orders placed um, and the points. This was an email which was auto generated, um, which kind of tells you hey, you registered, here's 100 points for registering. And then you can set all of this, it explains to all the program. Not the prettiest email, but you can make it pretty. This is what I could do out of the box without spending my more day a lot of time on it. Um, so let's go to marketing automation. It's, um, we have a few campaigns, but the one we're using for the account creation is very simple, three steps. We're looking to see if a user uh, was created. If the user has been created, let's send an email out. We send the email out through a campaign, automated campaign in EXM, which we've already created. Uh, and let's go to EXM. Once we're in EXM again, we did not customize a whole lot. It's all based info and the message. Here you can see there's a placeholder for first name because our sign up did not accept the person's first name as the as part of the registration. You didn't see the name. But again you can customize your registration process. Again explain the the loyalty program and this is an automated triggered email. So as soon as marketing automation triggers it, uh, it goes through no intervention of any person whatsoever. Uh, as you can see, uh, she has 180 points, so it goes to XConnect, updates it, comes back. Right now we're going to simulate an abandoned cart, and this is very important. So let's add a couple of <coughs> items to the cart, and then walk away. So either you shut down the browser, go to another site, it doesn't really matter. You're not touching the cart after this point. What's supposed to happen is if, let's, if we go back and um, check the marketing automation, uh, there's a bunch of steps on this one, but essentially we're trying to see if the cart was played around with. Uh, if it has, uh, then you know we don't really do anything. But if the cart wasn't touched, then we check if the cart was empty. Uh, if it's empty, we don't really want to do anything. If it's not empty, what we want to do is we want to see that the person has an email. In our case, that's part of our registration, so of course they do. So we send an abandoned card incentive campaign. Again, not a lot of customization, just the message. Now we have the person's name because of the address. And we're giving a coupon code for $5 off to come, um, come back to the site to finish the order. You can automate the generation of the codes if you like. Um, you can make it pretty. As you can see, Jane gets, this is a real email by the way. <laughs> Jane gets the email. And here you can add in your links, cross promote, pretty pictures, branding and everything. We didn't do it because of lack of time and just wanted to show the customization aspect of it. And hopefully that kind of gives you guys an idea. It's a pretty long demo, but it gives you guys an idea of what you could do. As you notice, there's a very few pieces we've touched upon which we've customized. One is the, the profile drop down up top where we showed the points. One is in the cart itself, which shows the estimated points, and then the final order confirmation where you saw the points earned. But those are very tiny pieces of customization. Everything else comes by default with comments. <coughs> All right, next one's my slide too. <laughs> All right, so um, this, uh, we tried to get some research out and some quotes out from a couple of the different places. Um, I used to work for a restaurant brand, so the first one did make sense. Uh, but the second one actually is very interesting because until you start looking at yourself and the people around you, you don't really know uh, how much loyalty is embedded in your life, right? So if you look at it, a good percentage of smartphone users uh, will be brought along to the companies who send points or prizes for gift of service. Where it applies to me, I'm crazy about Starbucks. I eat Starbucks coffee, but I get a lot of stuff from Starbucks, and it's nice to get a card, believe it or not, in this day and age. Uh, you get a physical card, it says happy birthday, you have this little reward. It makes me feel special. They're sending it to umpteen number of people, but that doesn't matter to me, right? I get a physical card, I get an email saying when I have a reward, what do I do with it, how do I use it? So it keeps me engaged, and one of the other 
uh, loyalty programs we'll talk about is the Sephora Beauty Insider. Again, the women in my life uh, use Sephora for whatever reason. And Sometimes and Akshay as well. He uh, just doesn't want to admit it. Don't judge. <laughs> but uh, uh, Sephora has an amazing loyalty, and I've seen it personally. And so having that personal touch um, counts. Having loyalty counts, but what you have to remember is it's an end-to-end -end experience. You have an amazing loyalty program, I can pick up the phone call and call. It takes three hours to get to a person who refuses to take my order back. It's not going to complete the experience for the customer. It has to be a full experience where from the store, online, on the phone, everything has to match the values of the loyalty program you're trying to um, showcase. Uh, so, one of the things with uh, loyalty programs uh, that we looked at was it's huge business. There's a there's a lot of lot of people who love their loyalty program, as actually just said. And one of the biggest ones that I personally have used a lot is supermarkets. Uh, I'm from the UK, so the UK chains I, is the ones I'm most familiar with. But they're big business. Uh, one of the interesting things we we saw was in the past year with X Connect being launched and then the previous stories with XTV is how do we connect our offline shopping experiences to our online identities and that's that's been quite tough right like how do you know who that person is coming in to the store online is easy you know you have them register you have them enter their details and you have them log in you know who they are but a person coming walking into your store is Mr. Anonymous or Mrs. Anonymous. They come in, they'll, they'll buy with cash or a credit card and they walk away. So one of the, one of the interesting case studies that I uh, looked at was Tesco's. And it's uh, one of the largest supermarket chains in the UK. And they introduced the loyalty program back in 1994. And uh, this is before the internet really had kicked off and it's definitely before e-commerce. So they had people coming into the store every day, every week, every month, and they're purchasing all these products and Tesco knows nothing about these users. So Tesco introduced a loyalty program and then all of a sudden these users are identifying themselves just by themselves, right? They're coming in, they're, they're scanning their loyalty card and Tesco now knows who they are. They know what these users are buying, they know how frequently they're buying it, they know how much they're spending, and they are then able to structure and personalize their loyalty programs to their customers. They, they can give discounts on the products that those customers are buying, and they can check and uh, they can then use analytics and see how well promotions are running against different segments of different users. So this is one of the things that we looked at and uh, thought this would be a great way of actually tying back those users on our brick and mortar, our in-store purchases and having them identify themselves so we can then tie that back to essentially XDB and uh, uh, XConnect and XProfile using whatever systems. All right, my favorite topic. Uh, so <laughs> we wanted to run through a couple of the uh, loyalty programs which caught our eye and until I, we were working on this plugin for commerce, I hadn't really realized how much these loyalty programs are embedded in real life. So when I started looking at it, when we started building uh, the presentation, this caught my eye. And that's, if you go online and search for the best loyalty program, I bet you you'll find this in the top 10. And there's a reason for it. Um, they're adding a little bit of gamification to it. They're adding a little bit of end-to-end -end customer experience because, like I said, we've had several people in our family as well as friends who use Sephora, and they have nothing but great things to talk about. And so even if you're just a regular customer, they treat you really well. You are a beauty insider, you get some perks. You purchase a specific amount of uh, products per year, you get to the next level, which is VIP, which is where my wife likes to be. Um, and then Rogue is the higher level where you purchase a lot more. Each of them have tiered benefits, but all of them have common benefits as well. And 
when you look at how much engagement there is, there's uh, specific events just for loyalty customers, in-store and online, so it makes them feel special, the cards which come to the house, the emails which, uh, which get sent out, but basically, to sum it up, it's the customer experience is what Sitecore helps, right? It makes feel, people feel special, and that's what it is, that's probably what the secret sauce is, where I feel special enough that I will not want to go to Dunkin' Donuts even though that's my favorite coffee, but I would go to Starbucks instead, and why my wife and um, family members would like to go to Sephora instead of other beauty brand products or stores. And that's something which you have to work in along with the rest of your offering to your customers. And reward programs aren't just about <coughs> direct purchases. Microsoft have recently, recently launched a Microsoft Rewards program and they will give you points just for using their search service. For, so go to Bing and don't use Google and they will give you some points and you can get enough points and you can earn points in various ways so then you can then redeem it for other Microsoft services or maybe purchases from the Microsoft uh, Game Store or something like that. But they want your business. They want you to be using their services and they're using this rewards program as a way of attracting and getting your loyalty to use your, their services rather than somebody else's. You use their search, they can then sell ads. So that's where their business model is very. <laughs> um, and there are plenty of uh, loyalty programs, including this one called Plenty in the US. And the way this rewards program works is it's a, a group's rewards program. So there's a, a number of different retailers have banded together and they're offering this rewards program. Uh, we have something very similar in the UK as well called Nectar. And you go and shop at any of these stores and you will earn points against a Brut rewards program. You can then redeem those pro these points at any of these stores. Uh, the great thing about these kind of programs is they are across different industries and different, different sets of retailers. So uh, Sainsbury's, for example, is a supermarket chain in the UK. Homebase is a DIY store. And then you've got the likes of eBay and Oxfam, which is a charity shop. So lots of, uh, lots of, di lots of diversity across the uh, retail market space here. But you know, you, you're getting points in a single location across, across uh, your, your shopping experience. Demo time. Let's run through another quick demo. And this time we've got a demo of a existing user. Uh, it's uh, Mr. Johnny B, my friend. He's uh, quite good friends with Akshay here. <laughs> and he's gonna come, to come visit our website and uh, pick a few products. And he's a very, very loyal customer. So what he's gonna be doing is he's gonna be using the, uh, his existing points to, to make this big, big purchase of it. <coughs> so he's come back and we're using the uh, user profile. You can see he's got 24,000 points. So he's very, very loyal, this, this guy. He likes to eat a lot with his friends. But uh, since he's got so many points, he might as well treat himself and order a few premium burgers. And then he's going to head to a checkout. And what we're going to do now is use our loyalty point to actually make the purchase. Instead of using the credit card that we did in the previous purchase, we'll use the loyalty points. We'll get confirmation that we're paying using the loyalty points in this case. And these are all customizations we've made. And then we'll get a confirmation that the order has been placed. Uh, again, these are just some of the smaller customizations we have made. We added a loyalty uh, plugin to, to make the purchase instead of a credit card, uh, instead of a credit card payment. But uh, yes, it was, uh, it was a bit tricky to figure out, but uh, it was quite, it was very sensible, right? Yeah. All right, so I expect you guys to memorize this in the next 10 seconds. Free, free t-shirts for everyone at the end. You can, you can remember all these. Yeah. Uh, no, it, I don't expect you guys to look at this at all, but uh, essentially what we're trying to get at is a loyalty program is online and offline, as we've said. So we've used several technologies so far. You guys have seen the Commerce Storefront, SXA. You've seen the little customizations we've done to the storefront components to see points. You've seen kind of like what happens in the back end with uh, marketing automation and EXM. 
there's a little bit of XTP and X connect magic going on, but that's something um, in the background. The reason for showing this slide is essentially this separate, different things happen. So for the um, offline experience, you might want to use API to come back and talk to from your POS systems coming back into the commerce. Uh, what we did is we tapped into the plugins, there's you know, several plugins by default which make up commerce. Uh, we just built a log the plugin that sits on top of it. Again, commerce is pretty extensible. The intent was extensible piece. So if you have, uh, have a piece of functionality, you could plug it into the existing cycle or you could plug one out and plug the other plugin in. So it's totally up to you how you want to play around with it. Um, one of the things I want to mention, actually, this is one of the things, uh, yeah, this is good. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention, and this is very critical, is I've been doing Cypher for a long time. And uh, when I first jumped into commerce, I wanted to know everything, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. And the best thing which helped me are the training courses. Um, so the 100, 200 training courses, they're not bad, they're self-paced, they're online, which is great for your teams. The best one of all for me uh, is the 300 course. That really connected the dots for me. Until then, it was very, uh, very difficult for me to figure out what was happening because you're moving from a web development mode into a different mode where you have a .NET core, which is a different way to do things, and you have a web side of it, so you have to have things talking to each other, so that's kind of interesting. So there is a learning curve to it. I do suggest training. One of the other things we'll cover later on is the community is great. It's the greatest community I've ever worked in. And like I said, I've been working in Cycle for over 10 years. The Cycle Commerce Slack channel is was my life savior. The people jumping on both meetings that helped me out. So I definitely suggest that. Uh, so the next slide, again, you don't need to memorize this or anything, just kind of trying to uh, connect the dots. So there's a concept of minions. Minions are nothing but scheduled tasks which run on lists like orders or customers or whatever it is. Um, part of the customizations, we had to customize to create a new minion to go through orders. So think about orders coming in, RMAs, returns, you modify an order, you do things to an order when a customer places the order. Right? There's a different lifecycle which is offline to the website which happens. You want it on a regular basis, capture that. Um, see if there's any changes to the order. Recalculate the points because points are money for you. Um, and you don't want to freely give them away at the same time you do want to give them away. Same exact way the, the commerce minion calculates the points for that customer or a specific customer on a regular basis so that our points tally uh, match up. So let's take, a, let's take a look at another demo. Uh, this is, so we have an existing user, Mr. John Wick. He's a, <laughs> he's a very loyal uh, friend of the he's community. He's my best friend. He's Akshay's best friend, but <laughs> fortunately he hasn't been visiting Akshay for, uh, for a few weeks. So Akshay wants to entice him back to be a good friend of his. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, trigger an email to, to, this, to, this, to this friend of Akshay's and uh, remind him that we still like him wanting to be our friend and uh, give him a discount. Uh, we're gonna use the market features in marketing automation essentially to do this. And let's run through the demo. So we'll kick off, uh, we have a marketing automation running, uh, task running in the background which will send an email to the user. Again, we just use very stock emails that come out of the box, but you can see there's a 15% discount code for this user. Uh, in a real life situation, we would be putting lots of pretty stuff in here and lots of links in here. And this will hopefully entice uh, the user back onto the site where uh, we think we found the enemy coming because he's trying to live, live a bit more healthily. So he's decided to come back and uh, treat himself and his friends to uh, some salad. He can then go through, apply the discount code. And you can see that the discount has been applied. He's got $23.99 discounted off his order. And then he can just go through and complete his order as he would normally. He will get an estimate of the points he's about to earn. And then he will get an order confirmation. We did, we did use a discount code in this particular instance, just because it's one of the things that came out of the box with commerce and uh, 
so it's really easy to integrate with marketing automation and EXM for the emails. Uh, we could have extended this to actually use loyalty points. That's one of the things we had considered, but uh, we just wanted to show a demo of actually some of the different features in commerce uh, rather than just going straight down the line. Yeah, the other thing to mention too, uh, I don't know if it was clear enough, but none of the marketing automation campaigns you're running, no one's sitting at the desk doing it. It's all automated, it's set up, and if you have the right automated <coughs> campaign set up in EXM, they just trigger automatically based on rules. Rules you can customize, you can set up based on quality or any other characteristic as to if this person comments and he visited, visits this category list through this, you can actually do a lot of that. Uh, and again, there's no manual intervention needed. And the rules we can use for lots of different things. It's not just the marketing automation. Uh, they do use the same set of rules, or you can use the same set of rules. You can just configure them in cycle. Uh, it just uses the cycle rules engine, which has been something uh, as part of cycle since 6.4 or something like that. Uh, way back since like one of the first versions I used at least. Uh, we've been using these happily on the front end for a long time um, and you can extend them. So we extended it to, uh, to be able to personalize based on the loyalty points, how, much, how many points a user had in their account. If you're using a tiered and structured loyalty program, you can start to then personalize your website and also personalize those marketing automation campaigns. You can use Rules Engine in there. Uh, if you have a tiered program, uh, silver, gold, platinum membership, you can actually start to personalize the website and the, uh, the experience that the user has uh, using, using, your, uh, using your site. All right, so this is one of our last demos. So essentially, uh, so far we've looked at what happens when a new customer comes in, uh, purchases product from us, what happens when an existing customer comes in and uses the points to purchase it, uh, uh, purchase products from us, what happens uh, you know, when you don't see a user for an X amount of time coming back. All of that is front end, and as we've reiterated several times, there's not a lot of work on that side to, to do that. Uh, but the, in order to tie the whole story in, for you to be able to see how customers are behaving, what are they doing, what do you need to do to make the most out of it, um, we need to look at the back end. And this is the experience profile in Sitecore. Um, a lot of the demos before this, this is, was like very important to Cam and I because a lot of the demos we've seen for experience profile are all screenshots. <coughs> all front, but that's pretty bad. So I wanted a live video on this one. So let's go ahead. Uh, so that what this is going to show uh, is uh, going into a, uh, experience profile, opening up a customer. Uh, there's a time, there's all my great roles as well in there. But uh, this guy is better. So, uh, we have a customer, and again, this is by default Commerce 9. Um, we, we have a bunch of information for the, for the user. Commerce by default adds a ton on top of it. Again, comes by default by Commerce, tells you what the average value of the order is, when was the last order place, when was the first order place, things like that. Um, there's a couple of other things too, like the products the user's looking at, um, uh, which were added to the card. There's a ton of other information, including there's a tab for missed opportunities. So which, which stuff could you have upsell along with products that we're looking at. So we tapped into this, added a loyalty component to it. Here, essentially what we're trying to do is, hey, you know, this guy registered, we promised him 100 points, so he gets 100 points. This guy maybe purchased a product and we wanted him to, so he gets extra 250 points. Also, the order point summary kind of shows you uh, which order, how much money was, uh, how, what was the total and what were the points. The points don't necessarily match the order total because you got to remember shipping, you got to remember tax. It's The points are calculated at the line item level, so it's natural that both of them don't match, but that's just a simple extension of what we did to extend the profile. You can do a ton more. Uh, it's only a tip of the iceberg uh, with XTB and XConnect. Uh, XConnect originally was super difficult, or I thought it would be super difficult once you get into it. It's very simple to customize it. So we've covered a huge amount of stuff, uh, like a huge, huge amount of stuff. I know there's a whole different bunch of stuff that we've used, so just wanted to summarize that. 
So we started with a base install of Sitecore 9. Uh, we used update 2 and a base install of Sitecore Commerce 9. Again, we used the update 2, which was released just a, a few months ago. We then used the components that came out of the box with SXA storefronts, and we extended those with the fields, that, with the details that we needed for our low team plugin. We also created this plugin, uh, which hooked into Cycle Commerce, into Cycle Commerce 9 engine. And uh, we created a bunch of minions as essentially task runners in the background to sync up our uh, earning and any subtractions and any uh, reallocations that needed to be done. We then used EXM to send out emails, uh, which was tied together with marketing automation to drive the campaigns. And we used XConnect to tie together the uh, back end of the commerce and uh, the X profile, which allowed us to run customization and look into the marketing automation tools. Um, we wanted to show a ton of code. Uh, trust me, I did. I did. Uh, recently did a group in Delhi where I was going on for like an hour and Mike had to ask me to shut up because I wasn't even done with half of it. But uh, this is a marketing track. It's not the right place for it. So again, you know, anyone interested or anyone in your team, we have a ton of content which we posted online um, as videos, blog posts, code is posted up there as well. And then um, we have a GitHub repos at this point. Again, they're a few weeks old, but we're gonna update it right after this talk. We just didn't want to update it before. The, we created commerce space, that's changed a lot, but essentially, when I first got into commerce, and me along with a bunch of community members are over here right now, we believe in sharing and doing things which make things easy for someone else. If I'm going through the pain, I want it less pain for someone else. So the commerce-based solution is an attempt to make it easier to get started on the commerce solution. The XConnect loyalty that has a ton of customization of what happens, like customer interaction facets, customer facets. You want to store something extra for a customer? you will find it in there, you want to be able to realize when the customer purchased the product, when a customer used points, all of that are interaction facets which the code is in there. And then the commerce loyalty is where the ton, the bulk of the code is already on there for the majority of the loyalty programs, so more than more you can access that. Yeah, um, they're, they're very extensible, right? So we've, we've gone with a simple, uh, a more simple um, $1, one point loyalty program. And we even considered more extensions to this, right? I, yeah. think, I think we're gonna go ahead and do that where you can start giving different points on different products and maybe even trying to hook into the promotions. So yeah. you could say, hey, it's Black Friday weekend, let's give an extra 20 point, 20, 20% on the yeah. so, like so expand on the camps point. The way we built it is based on the line item. You might ask, hey, the order is $100, why don't we give them 100 points? Great, we can. But uh, we were going back and forth on this and we finally decided let's do it at the line item level because you could say, you buy this specific product, this week will double your points. You buy uh, an apple, we will give you 300 extra points. You can only do that when you do it at the line item level. And you could cross promote, you could do a ton with points uh, and it's set up for that. Anyway, so again, we're running short of time I think, but uh, essentially we're a big promoter software community. Um, Definitely suggest your team and yourself to be in Sitecore Slack. Uh, there's over 3,000 people from around the world who are on it. Very willing to help. Uh, I feel it's faster than support, but that's my opinion. Uh, Stack Exchange, an, again, amazing tool where there's a ton of content already, hundreds of questions. Over 3,000 people from around the world who are helping answer these questions and get people moving instead of being stuck. Uh, again, uh, <laughs> time for Q and A. Uh, yeah. So yeah, if you got any, anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Go ahead, sorry. Ah, yeah. Um, the estimated uh, points on the checkout screen. Uh, I mean, calculated on the um, storefront side, the commerce plugin, or is it like totally worldwide? Calculated on the front end side. That's why we put estimated until the confirmation comes. The, the confirmation screen comes from the engine side. Uh, the points, we are pulling it from the order because it's in a pending order state. But every other place where we're showing estimated points, it's calculated on the front end. 
portion of it just because I didn't want to get into CSA customizations and that seemed like I didn't want to learn knockout at this moment, but that's something we are looking into because uh, we heard from Cypher like, that loyalty is something which everyone asks about and we do. We don't intend on like selling it or anything. We want it open source. It's a way for us to learn commerce and do stuff. So we plan on doing much more customizations on that, including building cards, which has been in the space here, but that's not the scale. So on this page, I assume you have uh, some kind of dashboard for uh, setting up the rules and calculating the rules, I suppose? Uh, well, so like Cam said, right now, it's straightforward $1, one uh, point. But what we wanted to do is per storefront, you could customize it, and that's where we were talking about line item level point calculation, where you could have rules, say, by default for this storefront, it's uh, five points per dollar, but also, if they purchase this product with this SKU, you get 20 extra points per dollar spent like that. But we didn't get into the rules engine, but that's where we want to go, is to be able to let them customize it per storefront. Thank you. Okay. I have a two point question. Sure. Uh, one was, where in the uh, current uh, development stage is your loyalty plugin from this uh, perspective of what's your loyalty currency? Um, you know, you are, you are gaining points or uh, you know, accruing points at one dollar to one point, yes. but when you are redeeming it, what's your currency for it? Uh, um, I think it's uh, 800 points. It's at one dollar. It equals one dollar. Yeah, but because you can, the, again, the you guy can... had like 26,000 points and the order was 263, so I'm just roughly, I think we put it as 100, and again, we want to make that configurable per storefront because I think it makes a difference, and then uh, as a discount, you could also say that if you find this item in the uh, cart, you could give an additional discount or whatever promotion you're running as well, uh, as points. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could probably set up another storefront and have just a rewards program where, I've seen this before, where people have a storefront just for things you can redeem with points. It's not anything you can purchase off the store itself. So it just depends how you want to run the loyalty program yourself, really, it comes down to. Do you handle returns? Yeah, so returns, again, uh, it's an offline process, right, in terms of, and they're probably called customer service. The order will be changed, the status of the order changes. That's why those minions are crucial, because they recalculate all the points. And we still have to work out the logistics in terms of, uh, it's a policy thing, right? No returns after X amount of time, but when you think about it, the storefront we have is catering. Once the order gets delivered to the front door, there is no return from that point on once the order leaves the store to go to the, so, but in a, case where you're selling electronics and stuff, yeah, it would get complicated and you would have to put a policy in, a store policy in place that you could only buy with points after 60 days from the purchase because you know there's no return kind of thing. But uh, any other questions, guys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, let's go to the next one. So th <laughs> thanks again for coming. Uh,